guys to one of my favorite places. Now, not only is it one of my favorite places in the whole entire world, but it's incredibly sought after, darling, and popular with many animals, plants, and insects, with over a thousand species all wanting to live there. Now, despite this, you don't have to be on the guest list to get in, or a VIP, or even have to queue. Now, if that isn't good enough, it's completely free to go there. It's on my doorstep, and it's probably on your doorstep too. Have I sold it to you? Well, let's wait and see, come on. So where are we going today? Well, from my outfit, you can probably guess that we're going to be outside somewhere, but we're not going to a festival, we're not going shopping, we're definitely not going to football. We are going to the woods. Some people are mad about football, other people are crazy about pop bands, but I am the ultimate number one tree fan. I studied a subject called zoology and it would be a good guess to think that I probably studied zoos. What I actually learned about were all of the animals, plants and insects that you find on our planet and that includes my favourite, the trees. What makes forests so amazing? Well, just to start with, they're home to thousands and thousands of different animals, plants and insects and they provide shelter from the sun, the wind and the rain and think of all those lovely picnics you go on with your family. You can even make medicine from things you find in the forest. As well as woods being beautiful places, trees are really important for us and that's because they do something to the air which enable us to breathe. They make oxygen. Hmm, so how do they do this? Let's ask Professor Christie. Why, thank you, Christie. We need trees, leaves, and sun. The leaves will absorb energy coming from the sunlight. What they need this energy for is to convert CO2, otherwise known as carbon dioxide, into sugars to feed the rest of the tree. This produces oxygen that we, human beings, need in order to survive. And this process is known as photosynthesis. Over to you. Oh, um, yeah, very interesting, Professor Christie. Thank you very much for your insight into that. Now, I think it's time for us to look at the tree from the top to the very bottom below the ground. The trees are absolutely huge. They're so much taller than humans. And the reason that they're so tall is because they're trying to reach the sunlight to get that energy that Professor Christie was talking about. But there's also something below the ground. When you look at the base of a tree, you can see that it's all breaking off into little pieces which underground are forming a root system. And these roots absorb, suck up water from the soil and they need this water in order to survive, just like we do. Not only do roots help the tree to suck up all those nutrients and water, but they actually help to anchor the tree into the ground so they can grow really tall without toppling over. So that water from the roots gets sucked right up this massive trunk of the tree and it goes to all of the branches, the tiny twigs and to every single leaf on the tree to supply them with nutrients and water so they can do their job, which is photosynthesis. Speedy outbreak! We are going to make binoculars. So we need... your very own pair of binoculars. Hmm. Trees are actually covered in a rough outer layer, which is called bark, and you can think of this as their armor. So it's protecting everything that's going on inside the tree, transporting that water and food, and it makes sure that nothing can harm it. And you can break off little bits of bark from the trees or the branches, and you can see just how it feels. It's almost like I don't know, a bit of a crisp or something. Nope, 
Doesn't taste nice. Note to self and to you, don't eat bark. So one of life's many mysteries, why are leaves green? Shall we ask Professor Christie? Well, thank you, Christie. I'm going to tell you exactly how leaves work and why they are indeed green. All of these leaves contain very, very small cells and inside these cells we find a pigment called chlorophyll. Once again, that is chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is green in colour. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Christie, again. Oh, no, no, that. I haven't finished yet. I'm still explaining. Thank you very much. Now the light that actually comes from the sun is broken down into individual colours, which sometimes we can see in the form of a rainbow. Rather wacky little creatures that they are in the sky. Now, we have the colours of the rainbow here. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. I didn't have one in my kit at home, unfortunately. Now. The cells that live inside these leaves actually absorb certain colours from the sun. They don't absorb all of them. This is known as the wavelength spectrum. They absorb all of the colours around green, which means, ironically, the one colour they don't use is green. Wow, thanks, Professor Christie. That's great. You learn something new every day. Hang on one minute, I hear you cry. Why is it then that at certain times of year the leaves change colour? Well, it's autumn now and the leaves are starting to drop off from the tree. And the reason they do this is because there isn't enough sunlight for the trees to absorb during the winter. So trees will actually cut off the supply to the leaves and they will drop off. But why do they turn yellow or orange? Shall we ask Professor Christie again? Well, it's uh, rather nice to be called on again for some advice. Uh, the reason the leaves are changing colour is because the little cells we were talking about that contain chlorophyll, the green pigment, have disappeared. They cannot survive if they don't have a food supply. So they leave the leaves and underneath we have a yellow colour and this was actually there all along but was just covered by the green pigment. Now, if I take a look in my lunchbox, I mean my kit box, we'll find a banana and as you can see, the banana before it was ripe started off as green and slowly becomes yellow as it ripens. Now, fun fact for you here, the green you find in the banana also is the same pigment that you find in leaves called chlorophyll and that is why it tastes better than bark that's for sure oh that's my banana sorry sorry speedy outbreak we are going to make a paper chain in the shape of trees so we need Open it up, you have a paper chain. So what happens to all of these dead leaves that have dropped off the tree? Looking at the ones just here, I can see that they're all at different stages and they're starting to rot away. And the scientific term for that is called decomposing. And when they decompose, they break down and they go back into the soil. And this becomes food again for all of the plants and trees and the animals. So it's all part of a big cycle. But they have some extra help to get them to break down to this point. Underneath the layer of the surface here in the soil, you find lots of different fungi. Now, the fungi that you probably might know are mushrooms and they love to eat. Ugh. 
leaf litter, as do earthworms. And did you know that in Britain alone, we have 25 different species of earthworm? How amazing is that? Not to mention the black-headed worm, the green worm, the rosy-tipped worm, the brandling worm, the compost worm, the chestnut worm, and my old personal favorite, that old red-headed worm. Something that I find truly amazing about trees, this gigantic one here, is that they all come from a tiny little seed like this conker. In every single seed, there is a tree just waiting to grow once it lands in the soil. And for me, that is truly amazing.